Welcome to Wolfland, everybody. Um, we're going to be uh, getting some ideas and sketching and drawing wolves today. It's going to be a lot of fun, and we'd like to welcome everybody to our Nature Journal Workshop. Um, today, we have an, an, an amazing guest. Um, um, Valerie Bayer is an inspiring nature journaler and also, I would say, community organizer. Um, and um, uh, there's a, a, a has developed a, a really successful um, and popular nature journaling program in Montana. Developed a community around that, and also um, uh, Valerie has has stepped up. Anybody anywhere who's starting a nature journal club near them, um, if um, through the Wild Wonder Foundation, if you um, Valerie is there to help. Um, to, to help uh, everybody who's starting trying to do that to kind of figure out some practices that seem to work really well for lots of people. Um, and so thank you very much for doing that. Thank you for being here. By the way, if you want to start a nature journaling uh, program near you, then Valerie is definitely the person to talk to. Um, so v Valerie uh, brought you on because... Uh, you are um, you are leading a wonderful expedition in Montana um, to Yellowstone, um, and every um, every year you also host these these, these wonderful um, Montana nature journaling gatherings. I was wondering if you'd sort of tell people a little bit about what's going on with that, and if they wanted to get involved, how they might be able to to do so. Okay, well, thank you, Jack. Um, yeah, we're really excited. Northern Rockies Nature Journaling is hosting this this event at Yellowstone. We're calling it the Yellowstone Rendezvous. And um, it's really exciting. We'll be arriving on June 19th, and we'll, pay, we'll be taking different field trips into different areas of the park. You can select your own field trip, by the way. And um, just really get immersed in what the park has to offer. And then um, we'll be lodging at the Yellowstone Forever Campus, which is gorgeous. And then um, on Saturday, Saturday, we're gonna get up very, very early in the morning, load up the buses, and we're gonna head to um, the very gorgeous Lamar Valley, the famous Lamar Valley. And um, we're getting up early because we're going in search of grizzly bears and wolves. And um, it's, I just, I mean, I can't wait for the whole, the whole time, the whole weekend. It's going to be it's great fun. And we're going to be sharing so many beautiful things and so many, so much great nature. And we'll just take in everything the park brings to us. So we're, we're very excited about that. Um, the best, the best way to really you know, get on board with that or anything else we're doing is to go through Northern Rockies Nature Journaling.org. Avea put the, the link in the chat. Um, we're um, not ready to share this yet, share the details yet, but we are working on 2025 annual event. Um, and then there's a lot of um, things we do throughout the year um, locally and, and so on and so forth. The best thing to do is to get onto the website and let us know that you want our newsletter. It's um, not Montana centric. Some of it is, but you know we try to we try we try to make it meaningful and interesting to everybody. Um, our newsletter. So anyway, um, the event to Yellowstone right now is full. However, we're we are accepting people for a wait list, and um, you know. Things happen, lives, people, things happen and people have to cancel. So well, I can't guarantee a spot, it's still possible. Um, so it's, it's still, I would still suggest if you're interested to um, pursue getting on that wait list. Ben Jack, I wanna thank you because today is about getting us ready for the Lamar Valley and the wolves we're gonna, we're gonna see, I'm being positive, you know, the yeah. wolves we're going to see, um, so thank you for supporting us by by helping us prepare for this event. Absolutely. 
Yeah. So yeah, if, if you guys are, are, are getting up in the early, uh, early in the morning, um, you've, you've earned this workshop. Um, and, and the Lamar Valley, it is, every time I've been there, it's like you are, you're, you're dropped into the middle of a, a, a nature documentary. Last mm -hmm. time I was there, you know, the, uh, the wolf pack seems to be feeding on an elk carcass beside, beside the river. But what is this emerging from the forest? It is a grizzly bear that has now chased them off of the kill. But what is what are these wolves doing now? There's there, there, there's there's this one wolf that kept coming up and like nipping at the heels of the grizzly bear. And the grizzly bear would like turn and growl and and then uh, do think like this 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 wolf can't take out a grizzly bear. What's it doing? But it kept harassing this grizzly bear that was going after their kill. Till finally the grizzly bear just turned around and it says like, I'm going to teach you a lesson. And it starts chasing the, 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 the gray wolf. So grizzly bear, gray wolf. And, and we, I watched in amazement as this grizzly bear was actually gaining on the wolf. I'm thinking, how is a grizzly bear running faster than a gray wolf and chased it way across the valley, getting closer and closer and closer and closer. Once the grizzly bear is on that side of the valley, the rest of the wolf pack rushes in on the on the carcass and they start and they rip it into two pieces. So these wolves are pulling this way. These wolves are pulling this way. They rip the carcass in half and then a group of them drag one half of it across the river, at which point the wolf, the grizzly bears right, almost caught the almost caught the the um the, the the grizzly bears almost caught the wolf so at this point the wolf then kind of goes like just shifts gears and flies back so much faster than the grizzly bear it was running slow to keep the grizzly bear on its heels the grizzly bear now gets back it can go to that pile or that pile but not both. It stood in the middle of the river for a while, just kind of like, ah, and then went back and ate one. It, it, so, so Lamar Valley, it's, it is, uh, it is, uh, you're going to have a wonderful time there. Thank you. You need to join us and do the commentary, obviously. Oh, oh yes. I, I, and I, I, I can invoke some David Attenborough. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> That would that would be fun. So color commentary, but no, the the critters do it themselves. Oh, you're going to have so much fun gonna have so much fun thank you i'm very excited i'm really excited i can't wait ah thank you so much for organizing this and again if anybody is interested in organizing programs in your area um valerie is is here to help you kind of come up with um routines and communication strategies and what are the things that you can do to make it to make your your, your program work again valerie so much uh, so much gratitude to you for Thank doing you. that for our community. Thank you. Thank you for inspiring me. Absolutely. All right, so let's take a look at drawing wolves. Um, before we do, um, I just wanted to, um, to, to, to read something um, for you. Um, this is some of the opening lines of a, a, a chapter in Sand County Almanac by Aldo Leopold. This book is um, profoundly changed the way that people think about uh, wildness in nature, um, had as big impacts as Silent Spring had on pesticide policy. Um, so if you haven't read uh, Sand County Almanac, I want to encourage you to put this on your on your for anyone who's a, a, a nature person, a naturalist, um, this this is uh, you're you're going to to really really enjoy this. Um, this is a very very profound um, chapter, and I'm not going to there there be no don't worry no spoilers. Um, this is a chapter called Thinking Like a Mountain, and um, if you want to learn how to think like a mountain, what Aldo is is really talking about. Cool to your local used bookstore and pick up a copy of Sand County, County Almanac. A deep chesty ball 
echoes from rimrock to rimrock, rolls down the mountain and fades into the far blackness of the night. It is an outburst of wild, defiant sorrow and of contempt for all the adversities of the world. Every living thing, and perhaps a dead one as well, paid he's, pays heed to that call. To the deer, it is a reminder of the way of all flesh. To the pine, a forecast of midnight scuffles and blood on the snow. To a coyote, a promise of gleanings to come. To the cowman, the threat of red ink at the bank. To the hunter, a challenge of fang against bullet. Yet behind these obvious and immediate hopes and fears, there lies a deeper meaning, known only to the mountain itself. Only the mountain has lived long enough to listen objectively to the howl of the wolf. So you, you got to, you got to. So when you get the book, you can start in any chapter, but start in the thinking like a mountain one. It's it's profound and 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 beautiful. Um, let's take a look at, so hypothetically, you may be in the presence of wild canids in the foreseeable future. And, um, let's take a look at how to draw those. What we're going to do is we're going to think a little bit about wolf anatomy, um, then wolf shape, and then we're going to put over that shape, um, some, uh, over, over that shape, we're going to put um, patterns, um, fur patterns on on the on the wolf. So what we're doing is we're we're starting kind of inside, get that anatomy down. Then we are building up to the 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 contours of the animal, and then we're going to put patterns on that. So to look at the contours of the animal, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at there are some places where you can find wolves that are all white, so not in Yellowstone, but we're going to be taking a look at the shapes of white wolves because then our brains aren't distracted by that pattern. It helps us see the structure a little bit better. And then we'll look at ones with, with patterns on the back. And I think you're going to find this useful for drawing if your pet dog or a coyote that you see running across the field, should you happen to go to a um, uh, to a place where you can see wolves, then game on. So, um, whoops, you weren't supposed to be that slide. Hold on a second. I need to go. Huh. Um, I am going to better. One moment. I am going to now go back to the Zoom meeting and here we go. You really got to go to a place where you can hear wolves. Um, let's, um, I'm going to start with a, um, an, an image of a, of a really uh, slender wolf. So this is a wolf in Spain. Um, and um, its fur, in addition to being a rather svelte wolf, um, this uh, individual has really short fur, but it's wonderful for us because we can see the wolf's, the wolf's structure here very, very clearly. And oh, by by the way, in in the background uh, or, or over in, uh, in in London right now, Ray Bonto has already started a sketch of this wolf. It's going down on the paper, and I want to encourage everybody to be like Ray Bonto. Um, and just every opportunity you have to make a sketch, make a sketch, make a sketch, start doing that. Um, and the. Um, and you're going to find that I'm going to be showing you some tricks on sketching these, but don't don't even wait for me. See, Ray Bonto isn't waiting. He's he's already finished this sketch. I'm guessing, and uh, um, and uh, uh, and and starting to, to to bust out watercolors on it. 
let's take a look at the anatomy of what is going on here with this very slender wolf. Um, and let's see, I'm going to go for where did that? <clears throat> so on this very slender wolf, um, we have a skull that is here. Um, just a little check. Um, Avea, are you seeing a red line on the screen? Um, I am, Jack. Okay, great. Thank you. <clears throat> so from the skull, there is a spine that goes back like that. This wolf has, you can see a little bump right here to a bump right here. There's a hip bone that is sitting right in that area. And then there is a shoulder blade that is right up in here. So think of in diagram view, you have a spine, you have a hip bone, and you have a shoulder blade, just like that. That's your sort of simple way of visualizing it. From the shoulder here, I want you to visualize where its upper arm is. Where does its upper arm go? What's from where to where? And what about the, the, the thigh bone? Where does it start and where does it end? See if you can decide for yourself where that's going to be. And in diagram form, thigh bones usually come forward. So let's use a different color. Um, thigh bones come forward. And in diagram form, from the shoulder blade, upper arms usually come back like that. Well, what about on this? Well, from somewhere up in here, this animal has a thigh bone that is coming right here to here. And then there's a little kneecap right in the spot. If you look right here, there's kind of a double bump. See how Right. Actually, I'll erase this. Take a look there at the contour of it. You see the double bump there? The top one is your kneecap. So there's your upper leg bone. What about the, um, the forearm? All right. This is the bone that is called the humerus. It's going to go from here to right there. What about the um, forearm bone or the calf bone? Um, where would that be? So decide for yourself where you think that is going to be on this critter. In diagram form, calf bones usually come back. And forearm bones usually come down. If you are um, drawing a deer, the height of these elbows and these joints is going to be at the same height and it'll be halfway down the leg. But in canids and uh, also in cats, that's not the case. What you get is that the back leg, that joint is often a little bit higher um, then the four legs. So let's, whoops. I, I, um, so on this back leg, you see the second bump right here? That is the head of the tibia and the fibula, which are coming down right like this. So those bones are, and the radius and ulna, um, we've got bones that are coming from here all the way down to here with another one, ulna, right there on the back. So two bones, actually I'll use a slightly different color for this. 
right? That's what's making that little bump right back there. And so from there, we get into the foot, the foot of the critter. And um, so in diagram form, the foot comes forward. And in diagram form here, the foot being is either going to come down or sometimes slightly forward. I'm going to draw this one in slightly forward. So where does that foot bones go? Right? <clears throat> the foot, here's my heel. The foot is coming down like this. So from a heel sticking up there, down like that. And then the palm part of the hand, so these are the tarsal bones on the back, the carpals in the front. See that's smaller, coming down like that. So notice this big, this big long straight front leg, and this big angle in the back. You then have the toe bones sticking out here, so toes. And then the toes are hidden in the grass there. Um, that's what's going on with the bones. Um, so sort of our, our bones of note. Actually, we could put in one other thing, and that's the rib cage. The rib cage is going to attach onto the spine through this area. And it is going to make a sort of a ball right up in there. Um, so uh, on a short furred critter, um, you can see, you can often see sort of a, there's, there's sort of a depression in this area, sort of a little concavity in here, kind of coming up against the flanks of that. But this gives sort of this upper part of the chest just a lot of uh, bulk and structure that gives it, that protects its heart, that protects the lungs. So there is your anatomy, the anatomy of that wolf. So take a look at it again and kind of look down on the legs, like see the double bump on that knee. I don't think we've really kind of dealt with that double bump on the knee um, in, the, in the past, um, but it's, it's a, a thing you're going to see over lots of different animals. Um, you think of like our knee, there's one bump. Um, but as I, as I, as I bend it here, here's my kneecap, and then right over here is the the head of that bone. There's a ligament that attaches them, um, and that gives that gives your your knee this sort of blocky, a blocky shape. The elbow is ends up being really really pointy because you have your 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 ulna kind of coming out there um, and and giving you a point back there. And your heel on the back end looks really pointy because there's a um, there's a uh, that the the heel bone, the calcaneus sticks up behind uh, where the, the leg hooks in. So if I look at that on my on on me, Right. Uh, let's see. There we, Hold on. there we are. Um, so my my tibia and fibula are coming down to about here, and my my foot then tees into that. So it doesn't come down like an L. It's a T because my heel bone is sticking out there. That gives an attachment point for a, a long tendon. It comes up into my gastrocnemius muscle down here. So you need that kind of T angle to come into your um, your 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 back foot. Let's just draw that T in there one more time. See the T? Right, there's that little bit sticking up. 
Similarly, I'm coming in here and we're teeing into that there. So that gives you sort of the shape of those, 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 those angles. If this feels, if this is the, you're, you're, if you've been exposed to this before, your brain's going, okay, I've learned a new things. So there's now this double bump. If this is your first time getting exposed to it, this will feel kind of overwhelming. And you'll say that, well, there's just too much for me to, to, to kind of remember about this. If this feels a little bit overwhelming, then here is the simple way to, um, to, to think about it. What you want to do is um, think of, here's my body, my back limb is um, an, an, an angle coming down like this, the front limb is coming down like this. So I'm going to see this big backwards facing angle here on the back limb. On a really short uh, furred critter, this, uh, this knee here also kind of sticks down. So I'm going to have my, here's my, think of the, the my calf, my, my, my thigh, my calf, and then my foot. It's walking on its toes. Up here, this is my shoulder uh, muscles, my upper arm muscles, and then my skinny, going to skinnier. So the simplified critter, I'm going to come down a little stub of my leg comes down. We're then going to have this backwards angle. In the front, I'm going to have a big muscly mass up here. I'm going to come down a long column and then have my little toesies on the ground. So that allows me to kind of have a, a simpler way of thinking about the muscles and the anatomy. So that, with that in our head, <laughs> look at this. Now, can you on this wolf um, make um, figure out sort of like where it's where's its hip, where's its knee, where's its heel, where's its shoulder, where's its elbow, where is its wrist? Ooh, right. Let's take a look at, if I am drawing this, I have a hip bone and I have a shoulder blade. I have a thigh bone and I have My forearm bone. I have a um, my this is my uh, tibia and fibula, my, my 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 calf bone. I have from my elbow doing this from here. here short and toes remember this is longer than this you'll generally see the back legs looking bendy back legs bend Front legs, when you look at them, they often feel like pillars, very, very straight. The unweighted front leg, when you lift it up, sometimes the paw will droop down. But when there's weight on it, front legs like to be straight pillars. Back legs like to have this really prominent bend in them. So, yeah. 
let's start thinking about then constructing a wolf. Um, everybody draw the wolf on your piece of paper, draw the wolf. Give me a little moment over here. I'm going to draw it too. I'm intentionally not showing you what I'm doing as I'm doing it because I want you just to be drawing the wolf. I will show you kind of my own approach to doing this in just a moment. Can you see those different? Parts of the body. So, not very pretty picture, but let me show you what I drew. I got that. Um, I sense I've got a box of a body. Um, this is kind of angular, but this is sort of an initial sketch. Um, to kind of help me sort of block in the shapes of this. What I'd like to do is show you how I went about doing this. Um, so let's take a look at both of these at the same time. What I usually do is I start by thinking about the shape of the air behind the back of the wolf here. Right, so my first lines are are would be something like this. So if I'm doing that real time down here, I'm thinking to myself, my wolf angle comes down and then it goes flat, and then I've got little wolf booty. Then I like to think of let's get sort of the mass of this body. So I'm looking at how deep, how deep is the body here. And roughly, I've got belly height coming in there. So if, if from there, what I'll, what I'll often do is just sort of draw kind of a bean or a box. In this case, I really kind of drew a box. So I'll draw a bean or a box. And what I'm trying to do is kind of not make this into a hot dog, not make it into a big blocky thing. I want to say, if this is this body part is this long, my chest is going to be roughly somewhere down here. This one is pretty heavy body. Then let's put in the head. Now, here's the tricky thing about the head. It's really easy to make your head way too long, the neck way too long and kind of make it into a giraffe. Look at this. This is surprising. Here's a little, this is, this is weird. Um, so if I draw a line right here along the back of this wolf, look at that. The head is just a little bit above that. Huh. So I don't want to get way too up high. I'm gonna think somewhere in here, my head is kind of coming in here and, um, and I just am going to put a little muzzly thing sticking down off of that. All right, just a little placeholder for that. Now, look at the negative space, this shape of the air right down here below the throat. Um, the so from from here, we're we're coming down really pretty sort of towards the, the 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 bottom of this sort of box of this this, this bean the the box that i had for my body so there's a little bit of that's that's a pretty thick neck what about the front leg remember the straight front leg that's what it's doing don't make it come down from the front corner here drop it back a little bit just a little bit in here and then the front leg is coming down now, here is my favorite um, trick for drawing the back leg. Once I've got this, what I used to do 
is I would then draw in my back leg. Okay, no problem. But then I'd often find that the front leg and the back leg were too close to each other. So instead, look at the negative shape here. Look at this negative shape. That's what I want to get. I'm going to take this negative shape and then attach it on the back of my wolf. Back of this leg. So I'm going to come from here. I'm going to come up. It's going to come down slightly up. It then comes whoa, way back here. And then down straight. Once I've got that, it's easier then to put the rest of the meat on the front of it. So I've got kind of a big section up here. The leg goes from big to medium. To small. And this one has just got its tail really drooped down. For my ears. <clears throat> the ears are attaching in a this zone up here. I'm just going to continue this direct line up, and there's a little little wolf here. From the nose, the eye, the tip of the ear, they're um, often sort of lined up here along the front of the face. If you give this a really skinny face, it'll feel like a fox. If you give it a deeper face, it starts to feel wolfy. A little bit more of a four. So those are some of my kind of initial lines. As we're doing this, I like to think of the body of this also as three sections. There is this area up here. Let's go for a different color. I have this shoulder area, so I'm putting kind of a bean shape up here, this bent bean. I have this big kind of hip area. Sometimes it has a little bit of a, uh, a, of a wobble in it, so I've got my, my hip area. And then there is the body that is between them. So essentially I have a chunk of body and then I'm going to have a hips on one side. I'm going to have my, my bean on the other. And that gives me one, two, three sections to the body. This back part here is bigger than the shoulder part. These are your big running muscles. These muscles here give you stability, but most of your thrust comes from this back leg. So um, massive muscle zone, trunk, and then this, this shoulder. <clears throat> if I simplify that, I have one, two, three circles. You want to start thinking of the body as these one, two, three sections. That's going to be really helpful because in a moment, we're going to be drawing this in a three-quarter view. And that moment is now. Welcome to the three-quarter view of the wolf. Let's first notice what the legs are doing. Because we're at a three-quarter view, um, the legs are, first of all, looking much straighter, especially the front legs, really, 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 really straight, right? The front legs are really straight um, because that's what they were doing before. 
but notice how much straighter the back legs also are. What's going on with that is if I have a, let's say I have a bent leg and I turn that towards you, look at that, it's straight. The more I turn it to the side, the more I see those angles. So when I'm drawing things at a three quarter view, even if there is a backwards angle like that, it starts to straighten out. If it's all pointing all the way towards me, woo, you really don't see that angle. So the back legs are getting straighter. The front legs were straight already. Let's look at what is going on with the body. I have my circle number one from this shoulder to this shoulder, up and around over there. I'm tucking behind that my belly, and I'm tucking behind that the hips. So I have one circle, two circles, two circles. My legs are coming down straight from the front. This back leg is looking really straight. This one here, as you can see, a little bit of a bend in it. What about the neck? Well, from this circle here, I'm looking at this as sort of a three quarter front view. If I were to take that circle and draw sort of the center line on it, its center line would be something like that. If the animal were turned more towards the side, it would be something like that. If we're pointing straight towards me, its center line would be just like that. But this is, is deflected over here. So here's the center of that. Attaching into that is a is a cone with its tip cut off and that's my neck and it's the center of that is coming over where that center line on the body is so essentially what i'm doing is i'm imagining kind of an oval in here on the front of this cone and my neck is attaching to that and then the head is my head is going to be then a ball attached to that with a little snout sticking. Ball attached to that with a little snout sticking out. We'll get into a trick for sort of three quarter view snouts. Actually, let's do that right now. If this is my head, And I'm looking in this direction. My snout, I want to think of the snout as a little box. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger on this back side, a little bit smaller in the front. And that can be drawn from different angles. Um, yeah, so there's a, there's a variety of little snout boxes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to attach it onto here. I'm imagining coming down this center line of the face and my nose, if it's going to start in here, I'm going to cross it over like a T. I'm going to change colors here just to make this a little bit more clear. And 
the edge of the box is coming down here along the side of the fence. The snout is sticking out. The direction of this line, I'm going to just match right over there. Actually, we'll be able to kind of move, some of my pictures are kind of running into each other. We'll, we'll redraw this in just a moment. I'm going to put a box at the front of that. There it is. Now let's try that again. I have a lot of these uh, drawings overlapping them themselves. So again, with this is my head, and there's its center line. My snout box is going to come across that center line. It is going to. Here, in this corner. Uh, that was supposed to be an eraser, but it didn't work. Um, <clears throat> So it's just, oh, wait a minute, are you? Yeah, there we go. Just like these little bits in here. There we are. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at you. Look at you with all your snout sticking out there. So then if I were to, um, you know, draw, you know, if, if we had eyes and things, you know, like that. Maybe had a little nose out here. Nose is going to be on that surface. Guns coming a little bit up into there. So you can see how that then makes your gives you a head. that you can start to construct. So that ball with the box sticking onto it, that that's 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 my 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 approach for making a three quarter view head, um, or at least framing that in. Let's take a look at another little wolfy view here. Can you see, take first, take a look at the, um, can you see what, does it make sense what's going on with the legs? Does, can you see the three sections of the body, the hip area, the shoulder area, and then the, the, the trunk in between? Look at the cone of the neck. It's gonna be challenging not to make that neck too long. Let's just make a quick sketch of this together. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start the same way. Here is sort of a line along the back of this. And I'm going to, and roughly I'm going to have a body that's about like that. In this case, I'm sort of even drawing out into that kind of head area. Everything's sort of lined up. I've got a big snoshage of a body. There's an area in here that is hips there's an area in here that is body there's an area in here that is shoulders and then they've got a little head sticking out um i have i'm going to put in a little ball of a head put a box onto that my neck sticks down and back my leg is coming down very straight. My other leg is coming down. Let's look at this negative shape here. So I did that negative shape. That places the next leg. Now let's take a look at this next negative shape in here.
and our back leg is coming up there. If you find that your legs are too long, it's always a good idea to look at where's your belly, how far down is the ground, and then you can, because I should have had more space between these legs. And then once I've got that, I'm then starting to um, kind of look for more more changes in angles. Like there's this cool little dip on the back where we get where the shoulders. A little bit of a bump there. And this critter's ears are not coming forward. They're sort of laid back on the head. So there is a little bit of, I'm seeing the structure. And this is also, I think, a good point for us to start to look at some kind of common fur patterns. Because we don't have any dark fur on this little beastie, um, this is um, a, a wonderful opportunity to notice some other kind of, some interesting kind of wolfy details um, about things. So let's, I'm going to start to put fur tracks onto this wolf. Let's start up here in kind of its, its, its head and neck area. So something you're going to see that is makes a really big, um, on the side of its neck, there's a zone of long fur that kind of comes along and makes for a little ridge along the side of the 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 neck here. You have throat um, your your throat kind of sticking down below that. But look at that kind of mane effect. We're going to see that as got, that makes kind of a nice kind of crisp ridge right in there. Another thing is that on the back of the the shoulder blade here, there's a zone of longer fur in here. And it comes to a very prominent wedge between the shoulders. So there is this wedge of long fur right in there. This is going to get even more impressive on pigmented wolves as this often ends up being a big black V in the middle of the back. Um, along uh, an, another place where you often see sort of a zone of big hair is right here on the belly in front of the back leg. So you know, if you kind of learn this on the the wolf, you also it's going to help you draw lions. It's going to help you draw bobcats, fox, coyote, all sorts of things. So there's sort of a zone of longer fur in there. And along the back edge of the leg here, there's also a zone of long fur. Often when I'm drawing longer fur, what I'll do is I'll make these little kind of a bilberry mark. I'll kind of put a little flicks in like that. And it sort of suggests that like, look, there's some longer fur right in there my tail's hanging down it's not as long as a little fox tail put a few bill berry marks into this bill berry marks after william d berry my favorite illustrator who's got amazing i saw it on avea's shelf right behind her there it's a book by bill berry william d berry so those are a few little features. Another thing to pay attention to, if you look, let me use the uh, screen drawing again here. If you look right in, if you look right in, um, Stop letting me get back to my pen. What did I do before? Not sure. Come on. 
Well, let me use this as a little highlight area. Uh, can you see sort of a red zone glowing when I do that, Avea? Yes. All right. See there under the red zone? See that little diagonal mark? Um, um, that is... Um, so let me see if I can kind of, what is my shortcut for getting back to my pen? Scissor tool, eraser tool, uh, brush tool, gauge, brush size, brush size, uh, need to figure out how to use my brush a little bit better. Is there one that said change tool on there? Or did I miss see that? Oh, let me see. Yeah, it's right there beneath show hide toolbar. Does that say change tool or is it just me? It's right beneath change that line. Tool. Oh yeah, let's try that. So that's if I hit the tab. Oh, this is thinking it's going to pen, but it's not. Um, okay. Anyway. Um, I'll just use this as a little indicator and then we'll, but do, or can you see a little purple dot on the screen? Yes, oh, we can see the purple dot. Change the, look at that. What, what's going on? Um, now it's, whoa, we're in a whole other zone. I don't know my tools very well. All right now it's right. Oh, okay, we're back. <laughs> I don't know how, but we're back. Um, so let's, do you see this little mark right in here? All right, that little ripple in the fur, um, there's sort of an indentation there. Look for this zone again on other drawings, and you'll see that very often there's either be a little indentation there, or sometimes there's a pigmented mark right in there. So that's another thing to look for. So often we have, so there's this big wedge up here with some shag. We have this main event going on here we have on the side of the body here um on the side of the body here we have um some nice shaggy fur i've got shaggy fur kind of going on here so these are just um these are patterns that i'm going to typically see across a whole bunch of wolves and also um, you're going to find as you're sketching an animal that like here, we're doing it from photographs, but if you're out in the Lamar Valley, the wolf's going to be walking around and they're thinking like, what do I do with the leg positions? Right. First thing to remember, front legs are staying straight. Back legs are more bendy, but what are the relative positions of the front legs and the back legs? There is, there's two ways to handle this. One, as the critters are walking around, it's hard to keep track of what is happening with the front legs and the back legs. And um, so then you're thinking like, if the front leg on one side is the one that's forward, is then that, that back leg gonna be the one that is forward? Or is it the one on the cross side? Are they moving together? The th Here's the good news, good news for you, wolves, and a lot of other critters have a bunch of different gates that they use. Some animals move in much more stereotypical ways. These wolves will sometimes, they will switch their gates up. So that means, take a look at this. We're going to go back to kind of a couple of these photographs. And notice on this one that... The distance between the distance between the front leg and the back leg is about one body length. In this case, this wolf is moving those limbs together. So here is this distance. It's about the same. Interesting. Um, but with a different gait pattern, uh, 
Um, so so uh, uh, Susan said that I'm not convinced they're moving at the same time. That is actually correct. Um, but there, there'll be a, 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 a pose. Um, so what, it, what, it, uh, where, where you are going to see them sort of spread out like that. Um, so here, uh, no, no, I want, uh, where I had a whole series where I had some in, maybe I, I have that later on. Oh, let's let's forget it now. We'll come back to this. Um, right, they they are not pacing, um, so they're not moving those simultaneously. Um, but um, the ah, this is this is this is going to be a useful one for us for now. Let's take a look at what to do when the wolf. Um, when the wait, hold on a second. I have lost my where's my screen. Where's my Zoom screen? There we go. All right. Um, what do you do when the wolf turns at a three quarter view pose? Here's my hips, and the hips have a center line there. Here's my trunk, and here are my shoulders. Right, so it's those three circles. I'm going to select a different color for the center line. The tail is going to emerge from that and hang down. Also, look for there's often a spot right in here on this white wolf, not very prominent, but um, there often is a kind of black spot there on the tail. Kind of cool. Um, the front legs coming down straight. And then we have our, those, those, those final little hand parts. The back legs, I see a little bit of a bend. And then in this one, I see a little bit less of a bend. All right, but still, those are bendy. Let's get rid of this. And what we're going to do is together, let's draw this wolf in a three quarter view pose. I'm gonna start with just the shape of its back over to the hips, and then we come down. The negative shape on the back. Now I'm going to hang my body from that. So there's the belly is going to be somewhere down in here, right? And kind of coming up to meh, somewhere in there. So notice that this point here, the belly doesn't come down in here. That belly, we're seeing that in the shoulders actually wrapping around further out here. My head. Take a look at that. The bottom of the jaw is right there on that back line. So my head is going to be a ball in here. And my snout is sticking out. I'm coming down and back. A little bit of a forehead here. My ears are coming forward. I give mine a little bit too much of a forehead there. Now, what about these legs? The body here, I'm going to draw in my first ball, my second ball. And then my third is in there. So I'm doing that ball, tuck the next ball, tuck the next ball on that there. I want to think of those three sections. <clears throat> and the nice thing about it that, that kind of starts to get me getting these sorts of curves like that into the shape of my animal. 
that first leg is coming down. How far down? Well, roughly about that far, right? So first leg is coming down. Second leg kind of angling in towards here. You'll notice, this is a subtle thing, but this is cool, that in this front leg, I'm gonna switch colors here. If I draw this front leg here with a little bit more definition, we're coming down and we're seeing then a little angle as we come off into the toes. On the back leg, I see that coming down and it stays straight. Why is it that I'm seeing more of an angle here than on this back one? This is, this is by the way, this is a, an advanced, very kind of esoteric thing. Why is it that on that back leg, there's slightly different, well, those legs are in slightly different positions, but what's going on here? They seem to be just side by side. So, um, over here, hold on a second. I have a plastic horse. <laughs> look at this. Check this out. We are going to look at these front feet here. Look at this, the angles of these both come down and forward. But look at this back angle as I turn it around like this. It appears to be straighter. I'm seeing this one come down straight. And I'm seeing this one here with more in an angle. That's because these feet are slightly splayed out. Because they're slightly splayed out here, when I turn it like that, this one is lined up with me and this one isn't. Isn't that cool? So we're seeing that there on that little wolf. What about the back leg? Well, I've got my leg coming down here. Um, sometimes when I'm drawing this, I like to think of this back leg a little bit more kind of in a constructivist way. And so what I'm going to do here is imagine this as a, um, a piece of a board, a wedge of a board sticking down. So here's the corner of it. And from that, I... Um, I'm going to come back. This other leg is going to be here, mostly obscured by the tail. Isn't that? Those those angles in that 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 leg there. That's that's cool. Now let's see. I think I made my neck a little bit too short. I'm trying to get everybody not to make their neck too long, and <laughs> I made my neck a little bit too short. So yeah, look at that. Sort of imagine sort of where that neck should be in the neck. Oh, huh. yeah, that little neck. Um, so rather than just kind of going, ah, I'm going to go with it. Um, I always think it's a good idea to kind of go back and feel free to give your critter just another head. looking a little bit 
better. And I could get, you could get in there and erase those other lines, or I could just get in there and make the lines that I like a little bit more bold. But those three circles really help you be able to get a view from the back. Similarly, putting in the center line of that back ball helps you figure out where you're going to attach your tail and then helps you visualize how these legs are going to be coming off of that. That center line in the back is really useful for draping your tail down. Three quarter view front. Let's everybody without sort of waiting for instruction, everybody just jump into that and let's draw that, um, or, or at least our kind of guidelines of how we're gonna block that in. Let's draw that as you'd see it from the front. Really big feet on that, the snowshoe feet. Now let's start talking about the patterns on the fur. All right. Um, if you are with a friend, um, say this out loud to them and discuss it. If you're doing this alone, say it out loud to yourself. What do you see with where the red is? Where's the red? Where do you see prominent black marks? 
really kind of bold black marks. Say it out loud. Say it out loud. And where do you see zones of gray, darker gray, and lighter gray? Where, if you're to put a box around them, where do you see these zones of lighter gray and darker? Something that um, is, is, is interesting is that you're going to see very similar patterns across a bunch of critters. Oh, actually, let's do a couple other things. Notice where do you see long hair? Hmm. Hmm. Let's compare that with what you see here. Where do you see red-brown? Where do you see dark? Where do you see brown? Where do you see your darker gray? Where do you see your black marks? What we're trying to do is to get our brain to look across these and generalize. Each wolf is going to be their own little individual thing. Oh, the one last question. Where do I see sort of prominent white patches? Where's my white? Say it out loud. Really, if you're at home, say it out loud. Where's the white? How does it compare with the last one? If I could generalize some things that I'm kind of picking up as I look at it. Um, second. I'm seeing that generally on the back, there's a darker gray zone and then it's lighter below it. And that zone kind of follows the contours of the body graph. I'm seeing that there is a darker zone kind of wedge going up on the back and across the forehead and under our eye here. I'm seeing red brown behind the ears on the leg, on the leg, on the top of the muzzle. I'm seeing pale patch under the throat, on, on the muzzle and under the throat. Lighter inside the ears. I'm seeing, as far as black marks, As far as black marks, um, we have the edge of that wedge on the back. There's a really prominent black V back there. In the crease of the hip, there's a darker zone. Going down the back of the tail to the tip of the tail, there's a dark zone. Similarly, there's a black patch right there towards the base of the tail. See the same thing in coyote. 
on the head, this outline kind of under the, uh, there's a sort of bump under the eye. Sometimes the edge of that has particularly darker kind of marker on it. Going around the edge of the face there. Um, and then sometimes the edge of this wedge of dark on the back and the edge of that kind of main effect, you can get some dark lines in there on your wolf. Another sort of general dark thing, we've got a really, really dark nose. We've got really, really dark lips. Um, so that is, that's another kind of good, good thing to get. Let's look for this guy. You see that wedge on the back. You see the line going down the tail. You see that spot at the base of the tail. You see the tip of the tail. You see that kind of crease of the hip there. Right. Look underneath this one's eye. Mm. That little wedge. And on our on our on our face. On the, 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 uh, let's not use that color, let's use that color. Um, on, if this is my, my little snout, I have a dark nose, but also those dark lips making to kind of a, a kind of big, a big dark base on them. That, again, that's this, I want to get this kind of jowly thing going on. This big dark base here is gonna make it feel, that's gonna be really good for our mouths. Look at the little bit of edge here along that part of the mane. So we're seeing similar patterns across a bunch of these beasties. And once you know kind of what this sort of general tendency is going to be when you're looking at another individual it's going to be easier to pick out um what is uh what is special and individual about that nice dark mark below that eye let's actually spend a little bit of time just sort of talking about the eye um we want to go right here So if I have, I have my eye here, very often wolves have a lighter iris and avoid the temptation to put the pupil in like that. Very often the angle of the head, the pupil is going to be higher in the eye like that. We're going to have a an area of raised skin below the eye, the bottom edge of which often has a, um, you know, by the way, the nose is out in this direction. Um, uh, the, the bottom which has a sort of darker edge and then you have the white below it. So this is sort of that medium gray. There'll be a little dark accent on the edge. Very often in Above the eye, there's also kind of an area of raised skin, sometimes with an extra sort of pale uh, bump in here. There may be a little dark edge in there. There may be a dark edge around that. But kind of paying attention to those patterns that um, <clears throat> those, those, those patterns of dark right around the eye will help you place those um you right. see that little pale spot above its eye hmm. let's all this one is much more brown okay, so this one is very very brown let's all make a sketch of this one um 
and then put in just some little indicators of where we are seeing these dark marks. Look at that edge of the mane. Oh, that's really cool on this one. Look at where you see those long hairs on the back side of that thigh, right there on the um, that, that curve of the belly next to that back leg too. That's neat. So if we now have a more of a three-dimensional and kind of understanding what general patterns we're expecting to see, it's going to help us be able to draw that. I'm going to leave this big up this up here. So we're not going to be copying what I'm doing. You've got the tools now for how are you going to handle that body shape? Where are you going to start? Where are you seeing, and this is going to be here, let's keep this up here for maybe a minute more. And a few more seconds to finish up any notes that you're taking and making. Notice now that we have an understanding of leg anatomy, 
Take a look at the leg anatomy. Does that make sense to you? Take a look at the um, uh, the chunks of the body, the hips, the trunk, the shoulders. Take a look at where you see long hairs. Where do you see shorter hairs? Take a look at where you see dark, where you see light, where you see browns. And my hope is that as you look at these wolves, they make a, just a little bit more sense and that there are some general patterns that you see that are similarities across these different animals. And then you'll be able to draw what you see a little bit more easily. When you're out there in the field and the animals are moving around, uh, it's, it's more challenging than you've got a still static photograph in front of you. The wonderful thing about watching real animals with the real animals moving around is that you're watching real animals with real animals moving around. Um, for the, don't worry about having to make a perfect photographic picture of it. We're paying attention to what, what can we notice about wolves. But when we have a little bit of an understanding of what the how the wolf is structured and how it's put together, that's going to really help us be able to draw what we see when we're in the field in the moment. Um, I am, am uh, we're not, not going to be able to really hang out very much at the end of this class, um, but I just want to do a little check in. Um, to find out if there are any initial questions and um, that are, are parts of this that are kind of giving people um, some trouble. Um, and um, then we'll be kind of wrapping up for the day. Um, so I am going to, um, if you have any questions, you can use the raise hand function. Um, you can also, um, uh, just uh, wave at us, and um, we will we'll, we will notice you. Uh, I'm going to go over to my gallery view, um, and let's join Valerie. Hey there. I'm sorry, that was a mistake. <laughs> oh, uh, well, well, still, I want to 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 bring you on anyway, um, because um, just want to thank you again for being such a support to the nature journaling community and um, for putting together this wolf drawing adventure. I hope that there are some tips and ideas there that are gonna help make those wolves more, look more wolfy. Oh, this, is, this has been a, a huge help, huge help. It's, I, I think this will make all the difference when we're sitting there roadside and um, watching them, watching them do their wolf thing. Because you also will be drawing with mittens on. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I got four inches of snow at home today, so you know whatever. All right, I, I'm I'm happy that that was 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 helpful. Do you have any um, words of um, wisdom, advice, encouragement for uh, potential wolf drawers out there, or naturalists who are heading out into your ecosystem? Oh, whoa! Um, just to be be prepared for anything. We don't know what we're going to see when, where. You know, they don't they don't respond to emails or requests or reservations. So we don't know what we're going to see, but I'm confident the park will bring us great joy That's right. and um, great things to see. So it's just, you know, wherever we are, we need to have an open mind and an open heart when we're in nature and just let it come to us. And there's just so much great wonder out there. And I'm very excited about what I what I think we'll be seeing at Yellowstone. There, that's that's um, right. You know, sometimes when we lead a trip like this, we feel like we're obligated to make the wolves show. The wolves are on wolf time. That right? there. Um, but what by getting everybody up in the morning earlier, what Valerie is doing is giving us the best chances to in the Venn diagram of our behavior to overlap with the Venn diagram of the wolf behavior. 
there still is some some parts where those don't overlap. Right. Um, but wherever whatever you see, I just want to encourage everybody on this adventure to be filled with wonder, with joy for whatever. So if it is um, just um, writing a haiku about the way that the, that uh, the snow is falling that morning or that the light is on the trees, whatever nature gives you, just uh, accept that. We don't want to kind of get ourselves in the mindset of if I don't see wolves, I'm upset about that, right? right? right. Because then we've got, if you want that, that's what nature specials are for on TV, mm -hmm. right? You can go rent a video of wolves in Yellowstone and put that in your VCR whenever you want, if you still have a VCR. Um, but the, um, yeah, the, the wonderful thing about real wolves is that they're real wolves and they're on wolf time. But mm -hmm. again, Valerie's doing everything she can to get the Venn diagrams of your experiences to overlap. Whatever you get, just roll with that, be open to that, celebrate that you're out there together, find something really interesting and lean into that. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Jack. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for everything you do in the community. Um, that's really inadequate to say that, but it's we we all thank you and we are all grateful for your your work. And thank you for setting the tone for our visit to Yellowstone. Be open and excited and in awe. Absolutely. Um, before we wrap, I'm going to bring uh, the mad botanist back on. Um, Evea, um, thank you um, uh, so much for um, for 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 being here for helping support the community and to help me with these uh, workshops. I know when uh, I I always have like you know computer glitches. I'm drawn off the screen. You handle all of this for us and really help us um, help make these successful. So I know that when you've got my back, I'm covered. So asante sana. <laughs> Thank you. I'm happy to be with you. Dear friends, until we all meet again, stay curious, be filled with wonder. We somehow have the opportunity to be alive and to be present in this incredible planet. Let's be curious and investigate with an open mind and wonder. And I look forward to being with you all again. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.